Merci François. Bon, je, je suis très heureux d'être ici à la mémoire, enfin pour le millénaire de, de Tom. Euh, bon, j'ai, comme euh, ça a été déjà rappelé euh, une ou deux fois, euh, donc le séminaire de Tom se, se passait dans, dans la salle derrière où il y avait une moitié de bibliothèque et une moitié de, de, de salle de séminaire. Et euh, je, je ne résiste pas, même si ça a déjà été dit, à, à, à rappeler que mes souvenirs du séminaire, c'est que Tom s'asseyait en général dans le fond, et puis il ne parlait pas beaucoup pendant le séminaire. Et assez souvent, à la fin du séminaire, il faisait un ou deux commentaires, et euh, il m'est arrivé quelquefois de penser vraiment qu'il avait mieux compris que le conférencier, euh, ce que le conférencier avait raconté. Et donc, vous... C'est pour vous dire ce que j'attends de vous à la fin de la, de la conférence. Alors, euh, euh, le travail dont je vais parler est euh, un travail euh, en partie publié, en partie euh, in progress. Oh, sorry, I, I should speak English. <laughs> in, uh, it's a work in part in, in progress with, uh, by alphabetical order, David Sauzer. Uh, alors, alphabetical order is uh, Shanchung Swan. <laughs> Et uh, Tiao Ling Wei. So I'll speak of uh, uh, normal forms. So normal forms, let me just start from by something we, which I, I liked when very long time ago I was teaching a course in first year. I was taking arbitrarily a matrix with some numbers, uh, any numbers. Well, I didn't show them specially, and asking the students, can you draw the image, approximately, approximately the image of the unit circle? And of course, most of them were unable to do that because, or, you, or, or they tried to take a point, and now with computers it's easy, but at this time there were no, no computers. And of course, uh, you, you, you know what is the way to do that. It's to look at uh, eigenbasis and uh, diagonalize, if it's possible, and then it becomes obvious uh, to, to see approximately the shape. So the, the idea of normal form, which in the way I, I, I will uh, look at it, was uh, essentially initiated by a Poincaré thesis for differential equations. I speak of diffeomorphism, but it's essentially the same. But it's a, it's a very old idea. It's a, Essentially, the same idea as diagonalizing a matrix, that is, choosing nice coordinates where some nonlinear differential equation or diffeomorphism uh, becomes geometrically transparent, where, where you, you begin to see, really, the geometry. Uh, sorry, Emmanuel, but, well, you see it inside. Uh, so, Of course, this is a very old idea uh, when uh, you look at uh, the works of, uh, uh, in the celestial mechanics, for example, or uh, in Hamiltonian system. This is an old idea that changing coordinates is not something innocent. This is something very important, but because it will make some geometry apparent. So this is what I want to discuss. So the second thing I, I wanted to say about Tom, and this was also said many times, that Uh, Tom and Grotendieck uh, had uh, nearby offices, but uh, hardly uh, spoke uh, to, to each other about mathematics. And uh, there is one big difference for me between Tom and uh, Grotendieck. Tom liked examples, and Grotendieck never, I think, showed any example. Even he won't. He yeah. won't to see examples, yeah. because they mislead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. But uh, sorry for Grotendieck, but I, I start with an, an example which is quite paradigmatic of what I want to, to say. 
And for this, uh, uh, I'll just write down uh, 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 a mapping. It's a uh, very simple mapping. I, I work in two dimensions, so it will be very simple. And it's a mapping which I call capital A sub with indices lambda A and D. And it's a mapping from the plane to the plane. It's a local mapping in the neighborhood of uh, the origin, which will be a fixed point. And uh, as uh, the derivative at the origin will be a, a rotation, it's uh, easier to use uh, co uh, uh, complex coordinates. So the, 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 uh, I, I'll write the mapping as a, a function. I, I'll write it a function of z, but you, you, you should think as a function of z and z bar, because it's not an, a holomorphic mapping. It's just a real <laughs> mapping from R2 to R2 in the neighborhood of zero. And the formula is very simple. It's explicit. It's z goes to lambda z times 1 plus a norm of z to the 2d. d is positive, integer. And uh, e to the uh, pi z minus z bar. So this is a mapping I want to look at. And lambda is real or complex? Lambda, that's a good question, that's a fundamental question, is e to the 2 pi i omega, and omega is irrational. And phase is positive, yes. D is, a, 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 is an integer. No, A, a is, uh, will be negative. Negative. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> but it, it, could, it could be positive. I want to speak of attractors. This would be a repeller. It would be the same. OK, but it, it's important to, uh, 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 you could think of 1 minus uh, norm of z square, but uh, I want to have a as a parameter. You'll see after a while. So this is a, a quite simple mapping. Uh, the, the, what is very simple, so, so think, of, think of this. 1 minus z square for, for this part. And uh, of course, this mapping takes the circles. It, it leaves invariant, let me call f0, the foliation by uh, circles centered at the origin. And uh, this foliation is invariant. That is, each circle, if a is negative, is sent to a circle with slightly smaller radius. And you have a mapping from this circle to the image circle, and you can identify both. And when you identify the circle, you have a diffeomorphism of the circle. So you have a family, a one-parameter family of diffeomorphism of the circles. Of course, you see that this can be written 2 pi i, imaginary part of z. And if you look in polar coordinates, if you call z equal r to the e to 2 pi i theta, then this mapping takes the following form. a lambda a t of r theta equal r 1 plus a r 2 d times uh, no, sorry, this is uh, the real part, the radial part, and uh, this will be the actions, and this will be the angles, and uh, this will be theta plus omega plus, I think it's r sine 2 pi theta. So this is a mapping. And this, to dynamicists, recalls a very famous two-parameter family of maps, which is called Arnold's family. And it was mentioned by uh, Daniel, if I remember. Yes. Arnold's family of diffeomorphism of the circle. Well, I was quite a close friend to Michel Hermann, and when Michel Hermann started a, a, a lecture on the circle, it was always the circle of length 1, that is the unit torus. So I, I write T1. And this R family is just exactly this Arnold family in general is theta goes to uh, theta plus S 
plus t sine 2 pi theta. So if you write the variables s and t, then you see that here I have fixed some omega irrational here, and I take this vertical line, I take this subfamily. And this Arnold family is very well studied, in particular by Arnold, but also by Michel Hermann. And uh, wh what is important is to understand the structure of this uh, diffeomorphism of the circle. So here, of course, for t equals 0, you have the family of rotations. But if you draw in, the, in this picture what is called the rotation numbers of the diffeomorphism, of course, it's diffeomorphism if, if uh, the, the, this coefficient is uh, small enough, uh, less than 1 over 2 pi or something like that. Uh, then what is, uh, I recall, the rotation number is that uh, as uh, this, this uh, analytic diffeomorphism of the circle, the, 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 they are uh, topologically conjugate to a rotation, and this is the angle of this rotation. So uh, here it will be uh, the, the angle 0. And, 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 and then you have what is called the Arnold tongs. And these Arnold tongs correspond to generic, in fact, this is, you have to prove that, diffeomorphism of a circle which have a finite number of periodic points. And some of these are attractors, and some of these are repellers. This is a generic family. Uh, except for t equals 0. And so here, when you cut this, you, you, you'll have exactly this situation. So what we have is a map which sends each circle to a circle a little smaller, and with by a diffeomorphism, which is a generic family of diffeomorphism. OK. So now, this is exactly, uh, this is a, this capital A lambda AD is a paradigmatic example, paradigmatic example of what we call, with David uh, Shanchung and Xiaoling, a geometric normalization, where geometrically normalized map, geometrically normalized map. So f from R2 to R2 in the neighborhood of an 0, which is an elliptic fixed point. That is, the derivative is just a rotation, elliptic fixed point. And uh, it's geometrically normalized, because just after I recall what is a true normalization, because just it leaves invariant this foliation by circles. So I'll say that it's normalized in the, on the variable r, but it's not at all normalized on the variable theta, because you have a one generic one-parameter family of diffeomorphism. So le let me now, so, so wh what is a, a, now let me just write down what is a geometric normalization. So, so I'll put it here. Ah, oh. how do you get, how do you, <laughs> thank you, <laughs> yes. Ah, oops, sorry. No, no, I don't preserve any area. I, it's a, it's a dissipative. It, it, it contracts if A is non-zero. And even if A is zero, it doesn't preserve the standard uh, Lebesgue error because it's a generic family. And, and this will be important. So now, what is so definition? I, I'll put here two definitions. I put here definition of what is a normalization. So normalization, I take, so I'll be interested in analytic maps. So I, I take an analytic local diffeomorphism from, let me call capital F, 
from R2 to R2, which preserves 0. And uh, I'll suppose that uh, uh, the origin is an elliptic fixed point and that the rotation is uh, irrational, that omega is irrational. Then what is a normalization? It's just a mapping, which I hope to be analytic, but which in general won't be analytic. But you, you look for a mapping, which will, so I, I, for Emmanuel, I'm uh, tracing a, a, a commutative diagram with horizontally f. Vertically, I have psi, which is a change of coordinates. And the uh, resulting mapping, uh, n, which is just psi composed with f composed with psi minus 1, also from r2 to r2, and should have the property that it is a normal form. And what is a normal form? It's exactly a mapping which has the following structure. Z, or let me call it zeta, goes to lambda zeta times 1 plus some function f of norm of zeta square, e to the 2 pi i, some function g of norm of zeta square. Which means that not only this normal form preserves the foliation by circles, but it sends each circle onto another, the smaller circle, by a rotation, which depends on the radius. So what we'll call now oh, a geometric normalization, well, it just halves the way, like in the example. So geometric normalization. Well, the same diagram, capital F here, R2, 0, R2, 0, some, uh, I don't know, maybe here I should better call it capital Phi in the first diagram vertically, and here capital Psi. And here I get a new mapping, capital G equal Psi composed with uh, uh, yeah, psi composed with f composed with psi minus 1. And this new mapping is exactly of this form, that is, of the form of the example. z goes to lambda z 1 plus f of norm of z square, but e to the 2 pi i phi of zeta, which is a function of zeta zeta bar, which is an arbitrary uh, function which is not normalized. So here I normalize only the actions and not the angles. Zeta is z. Omega zeta. Zeta is z. Choose one. Oh, it's zeta. Sorry. Thank you. Well, some people are still hearing. That's good. <laughs> OK. So this is a definition. Now let me just remind you, or teach you, I don't know, uh, quite very, uh, I know, may maybe I, I should first say something. Where did I put that? Yes. Uh, uh, le le let me make a, a computation. Well, I, I, I should do it, because otherwise it won't be clear. So this is very well known, and this is very simple, to see that normalization, sorry? What's the problem? Ah, it's zeta on the left, yes. Yeah, phi doesn't depend on the square module. It depends really on zeta, zeta square, like in the example. Yeah. So uh, let me do a, a computation. It's very well known and very simple. And in, in fact, Poincaré did this kind of computation for differential equation in his thesis that such, uh, such a normalization exists formally. That is, as formal series, which not necessarily converge. So if you look, let me just draw the, the thing. Let me call f as z goes to lambda z plus sigma j plus k greater or equal to of uh, capital F, J, K, uh, 
uh, zk z bar j. This will be the general form of an analytic function uh, of uh, z. And let me write uh, ps, uh, phi as uh, zeta equal. So of course you have not to change the linear part. So you take start with the identity plus sigma of uh, uh, I don't know. Let me take the same notation. Well, it's, yeah, uh, j plus k greater or equal to gamma j k z j z bar k. Let, let me just do the computation of the composed map here, which you want to be a normal form. Well, zeta will go to. So, so well, how you'll do? In fact, you'll do things by uh, induction. That is, by induction, you can suppose that this capital F is of the following form. It's already a, a, a normal form up to degree n. That is, you could call it lambda z times 1 plus sigma k greater or equal k between 2 and n minus 1 of alpha k, some complex coefficient, uh, z, uh, no, uh, so, some uh, uh, com uh, complex coefficient, uh, norm of z to the 2k, and then plus uh, remainder, which will be, uh, of course, uh, sigma uh, i plus g greater or equal. So here you are in degree 2 n minus 2 plus 1. So in degree greater or equal to 2 n of capital F j k z j z bar k. And then, of course, you look by induction to a chain of coordinates will be just z plus a homogeneous polynomial with j plus k equal uh, 2n. And then you make the computation, and you see very easily that the results, uh, you, you can do that uh, uh, without knowing anything, that the result of the computation of the composition is something uh, is this, lambda uh, zeta uh, plus, uh, or maybe, uh, uh, yeah, uh, well, uh, times. 1 plus uh, sigma uh, k equal 1 uh, to n minus 1 of alpha k norm of zeta to the 2k. So this is the term we had before. And plus uh, sigma. So you, you, you have all this. So you have plus sigma of capital F uh, jk g plus k greater or equal to 2n of uh, zeta k zeta bar j. And of course, uh, j, j zeta bar k. And of course, I'm forgetting terms of higher order. I put here terms of higher order, capital O of zeta to the, uh, so I have uh, 2n plus 1. And here, I'll have plus uh, sigma j plus k equal 2n. These are the terms I'm interested in, which are uh, f uh, f j k. So, so maybe here I, I should uh, put uh, I, I, I don't put uh, this term. I, I, I'll put it here, the term in capital F j k plus, and you, you you see that the computation gives you lambda i lambda bar j minus lambda. Uh, gamma, uh, oh, it's gk, jk, sorry. So lambda j, lambda bar k minus lambda, gamma jk times zeta j, zeta bar k, and plus uh, a remainder. And when you see this expression, you see that each time this expression, lambda j, lambda bar k minus lambda is non-zero, you can choose the coefficient gamma jk in order to kill 
this coefficient capital F J K. And when it's equal to zero, this is called a resonance. And in here, of course, because lambda is of modulus one, so if lambda was not of modulus one, you wouldn't have such uh, equality. But if lambda is of modulus one, you, you have, uh, this can be written lambda times lambda j, uh, j minus one uh, minus k uh, minus one. And so you, you see that uh, when uh, j <laughs> equal uh, k plus 1, uh, uh, you cannot do anything, because whatever the choice you make of gamma jk, it's multiplied by 0. So in fact, it means exactly that the terms of, so I, I did that for n, but you have to go to the next order, because here probably you, you won't have resonance, but to the next order you'll have. And you see that you cannot eliminate the terms in capital F, J, K, Z, uh, Z, J, Z bar, K, if Z, uh, G, J equal K plus 1, which means terms of the form Z times norm of Z to some power to, to, to K, <coughs> which are exactly of this kind, of the normal form. So, by induction, you show that formally this always exists by composing an infinite number of such transformation. So now the problem is the convergence. Of course, something I, I should have said from the beginning, that this such mapping as the example uh, are completely trivial topologically. In fact, they are all locally conjugates uh, topologically. Uh, this is uh, an old Sternberg theorem, which is obvious, essentially, because uh, topologically, all these maps which contract uh, send a circle to a small circle, so you have uh, some annulus which is sent to another one, and then you can build a homeomorphism which will conjugate uh, to, 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 to the linear part, if you want. No, not to the linear part, to, to the first uh, non-trivial, uh, non-linear part. Okay. But our problem is analytically. Can you have convergence of such normal form? So, how much time I have still? Okay. So, ah, yes. Ba -ba -bam. Oops. Ah, okay. So let me just remind you very quickly classical results on this kind of normalization problems. And, and the first one is Poincaré. So Poincaré did that for differential equation, but it's exactly the same computation for local diffeomorphism. So Poincaré, so what is known? Poincaré, well, if lambda is not of norm 1, say smaller than 1 if you want, uh, then there are no resonances. So formally, you are conjugate to something linear. The normal form is linear. And in fact, Poincaré shows, and it's not difficult, that the conjugacy is analytic. So you can always analytically normalize, provided your spectrum is not on the unit circle. So converges convergence of linearization. The same is true, uh, no, the same is not true, but uh, uh, what, what is the same in the holomorphic case? Holomorphic case, also you have no resonance, you have no lambda bar. And uh, in the holomorphic case, so uh, normal form is also linear, but there it becomes uh, something which is not at all obvious. And uh, the, 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 the best uh, uh, theorem was the one by Jean-Christophe Yocos, who proved that if you look at the mapping, z goes to 
lambda z 1 plus z, for example, you could put coefficients, but what is important is that it's quadratic, then is analytically linearizable if and only if omega, I recall you that lambda equal e to the 2 pi i omega, omega is not a, uh, or I write it in Russian, uh, in uh, Bruno number. So what means n not a Bruno number? It means it's too well approximated by rationals. If you take the, the uh, I don't know you say the convergence in English, the best approximation, or best rational approximations uh, obtained by uh, the uh, uh, continuous fractions. Uh, so best approximation of omega, then it means that the sum uh, of uh, log uh, q being Bruno means that the log of qn plus 1 over qn is finite. It means that you, you, have, you, you have not many very large jumps where qn plus 1 is exponentially greater than qn. And so if you are not a Bruno number, if you are a Bruno num no, sorry, it is a Bruno number, I, I, I'm called, of course. Not a Bruno number will be for what I, I will say after. Uh, uh, Alan, please uh, remind me of an example, my last of an example of Bruno number. Non Bruno. Or non Bruno. Well, uh, the, the, uh, the algebraic numbers are, uh, for example, are, are, are good, but uh, a Liouville number uh, is uh, non Bruno. Uh, if it's too well approximated by rational. And I, 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 I'll give uh, uh, what I, I need uh, after. Excuse me? It's, uh, it's Bruno, yeah? Yeah, it's algebraic, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's Bruno, yeah. OK. It's even Daufan time, yes. Uh, sorry. So now let me tell what are our results. Yeah, of course, uh, I, I should, uh, I have no time, but I should, there is also the very classical symplectic case, where f is symplectic, preserves uh, area, and, and there, the, the, the uh, one thing I, I say now is that one of the big problems in, in what we are looking in the slightly dissipative, weakly dissipative case, is that there is no unicity of the uh, normal forms. Uh, the, there is a continuum of possible normal forms, I, I'll show that. And uh, in the symplectic case, if you insist, that the, it's a Birkhoff uh, theory, there exists uh, uh, a transformation phi which preserves area and uh, which is unique. But generically, and this goes back to Ziegel and also Zander, uh, the normalization diverge. The, the, the so I won't speak of the recent uh, beautiful works uh, by uh, Krikorian, uh, where he proved that generically also the normal form diverge, but uh, this is not my subject. So wh what are our results? So I, I said that the, the normal form is not unique, and uh, I should uh, stress this because this is uh, really one of the main difficulties. You see, it's not unique because this coefficient gamma jk, when j equals k plus 1, you can choose arbitrarily. So you have a continuum of possible choices. And in fact, if you are weakly dissipative, you can even show that there exists a polynomial normal form. But this doesn't help because what is important then is to know whether the conjugacy is uh, analytic and in general it won't be. Okay, so non-unicity, non-uniqueness, uh, I, I always make this gallicism, uh, non-uniqueness of normal form. Well, you can show that if you start from a mapping f, and you have two normal forms, and one 
and two, so that's two mappings which preserve the foliation in particular, then in fact uh, 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 they are formally conjugated by something which also preserves the foliation. Formally conjugated by some h which is of the same form, h of z equal z times 1 plus small h of norm of z squared. This is formal. Formally, they are conjugated by something which preserves the foliation, since circle to circle. And from this, you can deduce that, uh, in fact, uh, if, uh, so, so be, uh, think in your mind as if everything was convergent. Then, if the normal form preserves the foliation F0, then the mapping itself preserves the inverse image by the transformation phi of F0. And then from this, you deduce that if you preserve some foliation, this foliation is unique. So the, the uniqueness is restored only when you look at the level of the possible preserved foliation. And in particular, for these geometrically normalized mappings, which send F0 to F0, then there is no other possible foliation which is preserved. OK, so now what, what are the, the results we have? Uh, let me, well, here it is. Yes, so we, the, there are two problems. Either you, you start from an arbitrary mapping and you, you try to geometrically normalize. And if you are already geometrically normalized, you try to normalize. And we'll see that in both cases, under a certain hypothesis, generically, this is impossible analytically. This. Uh, but uh, at the end, uh, uh, if the chairman gives me uh, two more minutes, uh, I'll show uh, uh, what, one, what, what I call a scandal, which we, we cannot prove. Uh, OK, so the results are the following. The result is that, and, and maybe uh, as the time is short, let me just tell the, the result in the case of the, the example, because this will be something which you, you can think of. So I'll take this map, capital A, lambda A, uh, d of z equal lambda z 1 plus a z to the 2d e to the pi z minus z bar. And ask yourself, can you analytically normalize it? Can you find a change of coordinates which is analytic and which transform it into a normal form which sends circle to circle and by a rotation? So the first answer is that generically, and I, I, I have no time to go into topology, so I, I, I won't tell you. It's essentially compact open topology and analytic mapping. Generically, on, and here, the generically is easy because it's on the real line. Generically, on the coefficient small a, not analytically normalizable. Well, that's life. I'll show you where, where, what technique is used for that. But what is surprising is the following. If A, if uh, omega, recall that lambda is e to the 2 pi i omega. If omega is not a Bruno number, Then for any A, this is not analytically normalizable. And the proof is very strange. The proof is, I, I'll tell you the, just the, what, what we do for the proof. You look at this formula and you make, so this is a function called it capital A of Z and Z bar. And you make z bar equal 0. If you make z bar equal 0, you get a holomorphic mapping. And this holomorphic mapping here is very simple. It's z goes to lambda z 
e uh, uh, lambda z uh, e to the pi z. Okay? I, I make z bar equal 0, so all these disappear. No, Norbert is not convinced. Yeah, if you make z bar equal 0, what do you do with z? I, I, con I consider it as a function of two variables. Okay. Ah, they are independent. Independent. Ah, <laughs> X and Y. Yes. <laughs> that's not the other Yes, okay. yes. That's very strange. <laughs> So okay, you agree that you find this? Uh, z goes to lambda z e to the pi z. All the rest disappear. And now there is a wonderful theorem by Geyer, which relies on uh, Yoko's theorem, which says that this is not analytically normalizable if and only if omega is not Bruno. And now, by a very simple computation, by, because of the special form of the mapping, we, we show that if we had an a conjugation C here, it goes down by making z bar equal 0 to a conjugation here in the holomorphic realm. Then, using this hard theorem, we prove that this is not possible. Now, the scandal I was alluding to is that Scandal. If omega is Bruno, we know that for almost, say for, it's a, a very strong almost all. That is, it's a, a polar uh, in the sense of a potential theory. That is, Lebesgue measure zero. It's a, so the complement is measurable zero. So for almost all A, it's not normalizable. But I'm unable to prove that if omega is Bruno, there are not exceptional A for which it is normalizable. And we have no idea how to do that. So how much time? OK. So le let me just tell you uh, two, two words. I I'll, take, I I'll, I'll tell you fro where from comes this uh, theorem. And uh, then I'll, I'll tell you a, a second scandal, which we cannot solve. So the, the, the almost all results, and you have the same result for normalization, uh, geometric normalization. I have no time to, to go into, into precise statements. But the, the, the technique is what, what we'll call the technique for almost all results. That is the results of uh, almost all uh, uh, divergence result comes from is the what I call the Ilyashenko Perez Marco alternative. So the first idea was in Ilyashenko, and then Perez Marco used that and put it in a much nicer technical setting. And it's a very powerful uh, way, which comes from potential theory. And I'm not at all a specialist of potential theory. But what is the idea? The idea is that you take a one parameter family. So, so you look at one parameter families, and then you, you, you go to the whole space. So, so you should so take a certain family of maps by, with certain properties. And in this setting, you, you'll take one parameter families. So ft equal uh, 1 minus t f0 plus t f1, two maps in, in, in a certain set of maps. And you look, uh, and, uh, and then you have a normalization, phi t, formal normalization. a priori, which depend on t. So here you have a problem, because there is no uniqueness of 
So, uh, and, and, and this is a problem we have to solve. In fact, I, I'll just say it in, in words. What we show is that in both cases, form a, uh, normalization of something or already geometrically normalized or geometric normalization, we can show that there is a special kind of normalization which, whose di divergence will imply the divergence of all others. So we can forget about non-uniqueness and uh, work with a given procedure of normalization. So, so this is technical, I, I, I cannot, uh, uh, have no time to, to tell you. So, so forget non-uniqueness, suppose it's, you work as if it was unique. Then you have this normalization and uh, write it phi t equal uh, of z equal z plus sigma j plus k phi j k of t z j z bar k and uh, you look at the set e which is a set of parameters t where phi t converges and you suppose you make the following hypothesis this is a non-polar set. It has no minus infinite energy. Well, I, I won't give the definition of polar set. It means it's very small. It, it, it's not too small. Mean not too small in the sense of potential theory. <coughs> potential theory. Then you do the following. Uh, we miss a. You, 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 you could discount the time I take to, to take the blackboards. <laughs> okay. Then you write. You write E as a union of En, where En is the same phi t convergence, but with estimate. That is, you suppose that the t such that the t in E, so phi t converges, but such that phi t of z in norm is greater or equal, uh, smaller or equal to 1 minus. Uh, capital N, I think, no, sorry, to, to 1, on the disk Z smaller 1 over 2 A, oh, 1 over N. So it's locally analytic, and you, you, get, you suppose you can have this estimate. And then, of course, E is a union of EN, and if E is nonpolar, this implies that there exists an n which is big enough, which is non-polar, because a, un a countable union of polar sets is polar. So non-polar, that is big enough. And then you have estimate. And uh, you, you have something uh, wonderful, which is called bernstein walls inequality, which will show you bernstein walls inequality, which will tell you that the norm of phi i G phi i j t, uh, the subnorm in E n, c in c zero of E n, uh, will be no so, sorry in the the the, the subnorm in, in uh, for all t for any t so the subnorm will be smaller than the subnorm on E n on this not to small set times an exponential where you have small n, I'll say what is the small n times g, j, g, uh, oh, g omega of t infinity, which is the so-called uh, green function of the unbounded component of the complement of En in C. Okay. Now you add to this the uh, and n what is n n is the uh, degree uh, 
the degree of in t of the coefficient phi a uh, i j of t degree of this then you put we, we compute the, uh, in the computation the degrees. You find that this is smaller than i plus j. And then by knowing that n is smaller than i plus j, you look at this inequality. You see what you get. And you get that, uh, in fact, uh, your theory is convergent. So that means that, uh, in fact, either you series is convergent for all t, or it won't, it will be convergent only on a very small set, on a polar set. That is, if you have find a single example in your family of a t for which uh, the series diverge, then it will diverge almost everywhere, because otherwise you should be convergent on, for all t. So this is the idea. And uh, you, you, using this, it's uh, then uh, quite easy to prove. So, so if I have one more minute, uh, uh, I, I'll just tell the second scandal, which I, I find is abnormal. And I, I discussed with, well, I, I'll put it here. Uh, so scandal number two. I discussed with many specialists of what is called the hop, which will be called the Neimark hop bifurcation. And I, I should add also Sacker, because Sacker, who died uh, not a long time ago, uh, did that in his thesis. This is uh, where, where you have a, a, a weakly attracting fixed point of a diffeomorphism, like the one I'm looking at. Then uh, you, you look at uh, uh, f of z equal lambda z plus higher order terms. And then after that, you, 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 you look where lambda is e to the 2 pi i omega. And then you add a parameter, mu. And this parameter you take, you, you, you write a family of the type, uh, uh, say, lambda 1 plus mu z plus and higher order terms, which will eventually depend on mu. And then there is a classical theorem that you have a bifurcation for mu positive in this case. If it's a, here, you have a weak attractor. For mu negative, it's a linear attractor. Here, it's a, the origin is a linear repeller for mu positive. And then you have an invariant curve, which comes to birth from the fixed point. And this curve, Sacker in his thesis, so, so it's a classical to, to, to show that this curve is, if everything is analytic or even say infinity, this curve is of class CK, with K going to infinity when you go to the bifurcation point. And Sacker says in his thesis, obviously, it's not analytic because the techniques don't work. In fact, nobody is able to show that uh, they're, they're, uh, the, in general, it's not analytic. In fact, if the rotation number of the induced diffeomorphism on the curves which bifurcates is a Bruno number, then by a so-called translated curve theorem of Roosman, you can prove the curve is analytic. I'm ready to bet that if not, the other curves won't be analytic. I'm just unable to prove it. So I'll stop here. In the alternative that you described for mediation comparison, must the family FT be affine? Or yeah, yeah, it's important that the family be affine. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, just because computing the degrees. And yeah. Oh. Here in the capital F, there is no Z. It's just Z. Z. There is no Z bar. No, no here there are Z bar. Of course. No, no, that's a general uh, diffeomorphism, uh, uh, analytic diffeomorphism. So it will be sigma of fjk, zj, z bar k. Yeah, yeah.
And one more question: Have you have you used the KDR theorem for, for to prove your theorem? How do you use it? Well, ju just proving that if uh, you have this uh, commutative diagram, the conjugacy of your uh, function to uh, uh, normal form, then by just putting everywhere uh, z bar equals zero, considering these as functions of two variables independent, then you, you, you show that by a miracle, because of the particular form of the map, it's not true in general, but for these kind of maps, which are already geometrically normalized, you show that, in fact, this would induce a conjugacy of to, to a linearization of the uh, holomorphic part of the map. That, that's a sort of miracle. Okay. Yeah, in your three parameter example, yeah, uh, yeah. In, in the complexification, you get automatically, you can put z bar equal to zero, get invariant one dimensional manifold after complexification. Yeah. Is yeah. it for free or? In, in, in uh, yeah, I, I, I don't think I have a good answer, yeah. but, but uh, your, your point, it's true, yeah. We, we, we try to, to, to use really the, 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 the complexified image to, to, to do something, but we didn't succeed, but probably you, you'll do maybe. That, that that's my first question at the beginning. To help me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh. Thank you.